This is Will Hawkins. This is Rob Spari. In this video, we're going to go over the trailer that we've selected to haul our utility vehicle side by side and all the accessories we've added to make sure we don't have any money left over for our kids. Now, there are so many accessories that I had to get this makeshift teleprompter to remember them all. So, of course, there's just a, there's just a few. We have a spare tire. We've got a water seal. We've got this Ericsson chalk tie-down system we're going to show you. There's uh, chalks for the trailer. There's uh, a ramp lift assist system for old people. There's a uh, flex tubing that goes on the wiring. We've got a Jerry gas can. We've got a storage bin. We've got some various locks, a hitch pin lock and a hitch ball lock that we're going to show you, and a, a, a wheel for, the, for moving the trailer around. And finally, we have some gear ties. I don't want to do it. You guys ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Classic older generation, always leaving messes for the younger generation to clean up. Tell me about it. trailer we selected is an MCT engineering trailer. It's the one of the only ones that was in stock, but as it turns out, it was a good choice. We're very happy with it. And uh, hey, would you mind getting me a cup of coffee and make yourself useful? Thank you. We chose a 6x12. The 6 foot width is just wide enough for our vehicle. Uh, 7 feet we felt was a little too wide. We chose the 12 foot length because we have a little bit of extra length from the vehicle to add some accessories, some, some storage uh, items that we're going to put up front. And the 10 foot was just a little too cramped. The 14 foot is too long. We really didn't need that much length. The other thing we did was we got a single axle model. The single axle, oh, thank you. Appreciate that. All right, that's a nice looking cup of coffee there. Now go play in the street or something. We got the single axle model. The single axle is really all we need for our uh, vehicle, and it is easier to maneuver. It's a lot lighter than the double axle models. I know some people think the double axles are safer. You've got a spare uh, in case you have an accident, whatever, or one goes flat. Uh, but we think that that was enough for us, and we didn't want to spend the extra money on the double axle. So let's take a look at some of our accessories. tire is a good idea. They mounted mine up front here in the middle. It means I can't have a storage container up here in the front, but that's okay. I found another spot for the storage container. And I think I like it in the middle here because it's not in the way when I go to tie the vehicle down. Other things I want to do around the side, no matter where you mount the spare tire, it's going to be in the way of something. And I think the middle is just fine. So get yourself a spare. to do a water seal treatment to the deck of the trailer. Ideally, we would not have any previous chemicals that would bead water. So we'll do a water bead test to make sure that the water can be absorbed or run off without beading. That would ensure that the product can be absorbed properly. We're going to do two coats. We want to do them about 24 hours apart. We'd like the temperature to be at 50 degrees or higher when we do it. The product that we're using here is Woodlife Classic Clear Wood Preservative. It's about $20 from Ace. 
and we'll probably check it maybe once a year, every couple of years to see if it's beating water. If it's beating water, we won't treat it. If it's not beating water, we'll add another treatment. We're gonna do our water bead test. Make sure that the surface of our new trailer deck is ready for adding the water treatment. And it looks like it is indeed absorbing the water pretty quickly. It's not beating up. So that means that our surface is in pretty good shape to add the water seal. Well, now that we have our seal coat on, looks like the water is beating up quite nicely. We need a good vehicle tie-down strategy. The opinions out there are many. Some tie the vehicle down by the frame. We're going to tie down by the wheels or the tires. The reason for that is we like the idea of the vehicle absorbing the bumps in the road with its own suspension as opposed to tying down by the frame where the trailer suspension is, go is going to absorb all of the bumps. So there are a couple of different options for tie downs to the wheels. One is called E-Track. It's a pretty flexible system. It's more flexible than the Ericsson Chalk system, which I'm going to show you in a moment. The E-Track system are long metallic treads that go down the length of the trailer. It requires a lot more bolts, a lot more labor uh, to install. Plus I wanted to put some steel backing plates underneath, which I'm gonna show you in a bit. Uh, but the E-Track e system is more flexible if you have different vehicles, if you're changing the types of loads that you're carrying. The uh, chalk system is pretty much set and uh, we're only gonna be moving this one vehicle and we felt like that was uh, a good choice for us. Now, the um, chalk system that we got, Ericsson, is about 39 bucks. We bought two, two sets because each set comes with four of these chalks, two for each wheel, and they're rated for 1,500 pounds. So if we, you've got two sets, you've got 3,000 pounds, and you can do all four tires. The um, set comes with two of these six and a half foot ratchet straps that are perfectly suited for this particular solution. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to figure out where to mount these chocks on the bed of the trailer. The way we're going to do that is bring the vehicle up onto the trailer and get most of its weight front of the center line. You want about 60-70% of the weight in front of that center line so that the vehicle is pushing down on the trailer hitch. We don't want the vehicle to be back of center where it's going to be pulling up on the trailer ball. So that's what we're going to do next. And go, yeah, that's about right. That's good. How's that? That's good. All right. Go ahead and stop it. And then when you get out, notice how that little step is perfect right there on your left. When you get out, you'll have a nice little spot to step down on. Right here. Which is one of the reasons why we got this particular model trailer. Yeah, I like that. All right. All right. Not too bad. We have the vehicle placed on the trailer. We're putting the Ericsson chocks in position. We have about an inch or two of play between the wheel settle point and where the chocks are going to be bolted in. We've done that on all four tires. Notice that the back tires are larger than the front tires. We have it pretty well centered on the trailer. mark our holes and begin drilling. And we also want to have a backing plate on the bottom. So this would go underneath of the trailer and it would then allow for any accidents or any type of uh, serious upward pressure 
to not be relying solely on the washer underneath, but would be trying to pull up this whole entire plate. And as it's spread across two boards, we think that that's a, a much safer design. Now, this particular backing plate, we couldn't find any plates that specifically match the Ericsson system. I'm very disappointed about that. I wish they would make some. But this particular plate is pretty good. It has two holes that match here. We're going to have to drill two holes here. Then we're going to have to cut this right about here to separate these into two pieces. And then this remaining piece, the two holes, will fit this side. So the backing plate will end up being uh, split into two. These uh, four holes for this guy and these two holes for the other side. This is a two and a half inch uh, stainless steel bolt hex and it has a lock washer, a flat washer, and a nylox nut for the bottom. And now that we have our backing plate cut, we're going to move the smaller piece away a little bit, get it underneath of the tool hole side. The remaining piece is going to be where there are four bolts. We're going to line those up with the two bolts that are two holes that are already cut and we're going to have to mark where the other two bolt holes are going to go. So we'll mark those. Now we can take a center punch and we're going to make a starter spot for the drill bit so that the drill bit stays when we try to uh, get started. Now we're going to drill our eighth inch pilot hole on the two center punch spots we made. And here's a better look at adding oil to the drilling process. Put a couple drops there. As we use successively larger drill bits, the drilling is easy. Keeps the drill bit cool and allows us to uh, have less wear and tear on the drill bit itself. When we do all of the plates with that drill bit size, then we'll swap to the next size drill bit and do it again. And another thing we do is we have a file to take the rough edges off. This will help to ensure that you don't get a bad injury just when handling the plates. And if there's any really rough edges along the side, you want to file them down as well. Now we have our two separate backing plates that have been cut in half with the bolts from the underside ready to tighten. Hey, let's get her on up there. Keep going, baby. Yeehaw! That's it. I like it. Here we have the strap for our Ericsson tie down chalk system. We use a gear tie to keep them together. We've labeled them F for front, R for rear, because the straps themselves are all six and a half feet long, but the front tire is smaller than the back tire, so we typically have a length that is shorter for one than the other, and rather than have to readjust the straps each time, we try to use the same ones for the front, same ones for the rear, and then they're pretty much ready to go. So we start with the label out in our particular situation. It's not, you don't have to do it one way or the other. We just try to be consistent. We get this guy in here. He's ready to go. We try to wrap him over the center of the tire as best we can. This side, of course, is about the right length because we've used this one numerous times. And we just and this guy is super tight now, and it only took like you know 15 seconds to put it on. Same thing for the other three tires, and we'll be good to go. Something else I should mention about the Ericsson tie down. Notice how we have the ratchets on the outside. Uh, same goes for the rear. They're heading uh, towards the back 
on the rear tires. We don't want the ratchet on the inside part of the vehicle because it's harder to get to. Another thing you'll notice is once we've pushed the ratchet in to kind of lock it in place, we've taken the slack, routed it through a little bit and used the um, gear tie here to hold it in place. So I wanted to get a couple of extra tie down straps just so I could have a couple of spares. And these are six and a half feet in length. They're specifically suited to this Ericsson tie down chalk system. And online, I couldn't find any spares that weren't like 12, 18 feet. And they cost, you know, 15, 18 bucks a pop. And here for $39, I'm able to get a whole nother set of the chalk system, which comes with four of these yellow chalks. So now I've got two chalks on this trailer wheel, two chalks on the other trailer wheel, and two spare tie down straps. So problem solved for $39. One of the things I found with the lift gate, it's pretty heavy. So we'll show you a little bit about the trouble we have with it and then the solution. So Will, one of the reasons that we're planning to get a lift gate assist is because this gate is too heavy for old fellers like myself. So we're gonna let you take it down manually and see for yourself uh, how heavy you think this thing is. All right, Rob. All right, here we go. All right, use your knees now. It gets pretty heavy there at the bottom, doesn't it? Yeah, sure does. Take four. Here's a close-up of the ramp lift system. Double barrel by rackmmfg.com. We had the trailer place install it. I think that was a good idea had some challenges would have had to drill in underneath here it's tough to get that bolt in we probably could have done it but i think it was smarter to let them do it so now we have our ramp lift assist system installed and we're going to see if it's any easier to lower and raise this ramp than before let's see how you like it The old man's going to be in better shape now. Under the trailer, there are a number of wiring runs. These are for brake lights, turn signals, things like that. It's probably okay as it is, but we're going to add some quarter inch flex tube to make it a little more secure and safe from the elements and from gnawing rodents. This flex tubing looks a little scary. Let's get to it. Well, here's the flex tubing installed. It's not really that complicated. Just get it around the wires. Of course, you have to make breaks here. I need to fix that little spot. up this jerry can kit i believe that jerry is an old throwback term to the world war ii days it's the shape of the can it is an iconic from that era it's metal it holds about five gallons came with this lockable frame which is nice uh, i'd like to get it bolted up to the trailer we have a little bit of a challenge we got a gap here uh, between the wood plank and the frame so we've cut a little piece of wood and, and shoved it under there to make this nice and level. So when we slide this over and we bolt it in uh, through to the bottom, well, it'll be nice and level. I'd also like to try to get a couple of uh, L brackets over here. We'll see how that goes. Here we have the jerry can frame installed. I have two bolts on either end here. These bolt holes came with the frame 
and I've just used qu uh, quarter inch bolts to go through here on the, on the decking. On this side, I have a little wood shim because there was a gap with the frame and went through the frame, so that's nice and tight. Up here, I added a L bracket. You can see I've got a couple of different bolts. It's not, not beautiful. I'll see if I can maybe uh, match them up and make it a little nicer later. But the important thing here was that these were flathead. They, they, I didn't want bolt heads sticking up because I didn't want them touching the can. And of course, uh, we came through the frame on this side. Uh, so it's pretty sturdy. It's not going anywhere. Now that we have our frame installed, we can put the can in to see how she works. It comes over nicely. There's a little lock spot, of course. We're just going to use a little lock. Nothing's going to keep a serious thief from taking it, but enough to deter the casual pilferer. For mounting the storage bin, we put it up here in the front corner. We wanted to put it on the side here so that it wouldn't be in the way of the spare tire. And we also kept it away from the frame a little bit so we could get the latch through. And it wasn't very difficult, just two bolts there, two bolts here through the deck. That's really about it. Some of the items we're gonna put in the bottom of the storage bin are spares. We're using our old Ericsson box for the bottom here. We probably won't need these on a regular basis. There are two spare tie-down straps. There's a spare hitch pin with clip, and there's some spare gear ties down here. So we'll just keep these at the bottom. Probably won't need to get into this very often. Other items we're putting in our storage bin. On top of that box, we've got our four ratchet straps for tie-down. We want these on the top and handy because we'll be taking these in and out on a regular basis. We have another little box here. I've dedicated a couple of 7 16 inch wrenches because that is the bolt that pretty much we used on all of our uh, old items and we want those handy in case we need to do any tightening up. I've even got some spare bolts and uh, nuts and washers. We've got our hitch lock. This is for when the trailer is on the vehicle. This keeps people from being able to take the trailer off the vehicle. And we've got a little hammer here. This I've used a few times to knock out a stubborn hitch pin that won't come loose. I've got a LED light that plugs into the cigarette lighter. That's just sort of an emergency item. And we've got a, a ball that has a lock to it. This is in order to keep people from taking the trailer when the trailer is not on the vehicle. And we've got the foot post. This is a... Uh, item that we're going to swap back and forth with the wheel. So at one time or another, the wheel or the foot post will be on, and whichever one is not in use, we'll store in this box. Uh, there's probably some other items we'll put in here, but that's it for the moment. Dimensions of this storage bin are 30 inches wide. It's 10 inches deep or tall, and from front to back, I guess you might call that the depth, it's 13 and a half. We wanted to have a relatively short profile because when we opened the lid, we didn't want it to interfere with the winch, which we don't even have yet. We wanted a locking model and we wanted it to be metal. There are some plastic, uh, rugged plastic versions. We really didn't want that. We wanted a metal box. So this was pretty good. Picked up a couple of locks. This one is a hitch ball that goes into the trailer when the trailer is unhitched from the vehicle so that no one can put the trailer on their vehicle and take it. It was about $80. This lock is the opposite situation. This one is to put through the hitch uh, itself, and when the trailer is on the vehicle, no one can take the, um, the trailer off the hitch post. Uh, this one was about $17. Got both of these from the Four Acres trailer sales in Newport, Delaware. The way this hitch ball lock works, put the key in, release this top part. Just stick the ball in there. 
and put this guy back on, pop the key out, and now no one can get their vehicle on your trailer. The way the hitch latch lock works, when you've got your vehicle on the trailer, you use this little guy, you gotta release the pin, and he simply goes through here, and you take the key out, put this on to keep the dirt and grime road stuff out, of course, and now no one can release the hitch to get it off your vehicle. Well, I recommend that you get both a wheel and a foot for your hitch post. The wheel is good for when the trailer is off the vehicle and you're maneuvering the trailer around manually. The foot is used when you have the trailer hooked to the vehicle because the wheel hangs down too low and you want to still protect the, the hitch post, but the, um, the foot does not hang down as far. So let's see how hard it is to maneuver this trailer without the ball. And it's way heavier, right? A lot more difficult to maneuver this thing around. So I think we want the wheel. <laughs> uh, so let's see how much easier it is to maneuver this trailer with the wheel on it instead of the uh, the footer. What do you think, man? A lot easier, isn't it? Right. So when you're driving the trailer you want to make sure that you're using the foot as your safety measure to protect the hitch post and you take the wheel off because the wheel hangs down too far. This is a great little accessory for the trailer. It's a pack of gear ties. They're reusable twist ties, essentially. And I bought the uh, 12 pack of, they're relatively thin. I don't know what the thickness is. It doesn't say on the package what the thickness is. I do have some other gear ties that are a lot thicker, but I uh, didn't really need those. I'm gonna show you what I use these for right now. I really like to use the gear tie to store the hitch pin. And the way I do that is take the gear tie Throw it around the, the trailer frame, make a little loop, twist it back on itself, and make a little J clip like that. And that's what this guy is right here. So the way we use it, when we go to take the ramp up and down, we take the hitch pin out, take the clip, pull it out, we pull the pin out, and now of course we're holding up the ramp. It's still connected on the other side, but we've got to take the other side off too. We have these two pieces. I don't like to lose them, and they tend to flop around and, and get separated from the trailer. So you can just put them right there, and that works great. You do the same thing on the other side. You just leave it there while you're out riding around. When you put the hitch back up, I'm sorry, when you put the ramp back up, hitch pin is right here. It's ready to go. Pull it out, put it back in. Easy peasy. Another thing I like to use the gear ties for is to keep these tie-down straps, these ratchet straps, nice and organized. You can see it's real easy to open them, twist them up, keeps them, keeps them nice and neat. Here's our before and after. You can see the gas cans mounted, the storage locker, Ericsson chalk tie-down system. We've got a ramp lift assist, number of other items you can't really see in this view. Don't forget to make yourself a set of keys, I would recommend labeling them, of course, and I would make a backup set, keep those in your truck, and I think we're ready to go. Let's take it away. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little trailer video, and here's a movie trailer to send you on your way.